A jump box is a great resource to have. Maybe you call a jump box a bastion host or a bastion server. Whatever you call it, it does the same thing. What it does is it allows us to add an extra layer of defense when we manage our servers. So instead of managing these Linux servers we see here directly over the internet, we would access the jump box first over the internet and then from the jump box, we would administer these Linux servers. So let's analyze right now the security group that is being used for my Linux web servers. So the security group for the Linux web servers states that we are allowing HTTP connectivity. We are allowing HTTPS connectivity from all sources. And then we're allowing SSH connectivity from everybody. Now, I use this as my source here to simplify my demonstration. However, let's take a moment to cover the importance of being as specific as possible, especially with this particular port. So port 22 is for management purposes, SSH. This source means anybody in the entire world will be able to connect to my servers using port 22 for management purposes. Bad idea. So what might we do instead in the real world? Well, I highly encourage you to figure out what address range your administrators would be using to connect to these servers over the internet. So if they are uh, using network address translation at the uh, egress point of the corporate network, then what is that address range that they're address could be translated to as they go out to the internet. Because once they come around the internet over to AWS, that public IP address will be representing them. So you'd want that range of addresses you're using for network address translation right here as an example. If you have a single address that you know you always get translated to for administrative purposes as you go out on the internet, then you put that address in. If there's a range of addresses for your group of admins that are used, then you put that address in. If you're at home right now practicing, I would look up the IP address of my router, my public IP address, and I would put that in there as a slash 32 address. That way there only my address can be used in order to administer these particular servers. So right now, anybody could connect. So how would we connect? We'd open up our terminal program. I'm going to use PuTTY right now. We would find out the DNS name of our instance, our host name, or we could use the public IP address. So I'm just going to grab the public DNS name right here. I'm going to put that into PuTTY. And then PuTTY is going to require me to provide a key a private key of a public private key pair because we log into our servers using public private key pairs for authentication purposes. So the server already has the public key and I have to have the private key. However, instead of specifying the key right here, I use pageant, which is a tool that can be used with putty and it allows me to have my keys in this key list. And then all I have to do is use agent forwarding. So I'm going to use agent forwarding instead. And the reason why we'll see later when we come back to this. So I'm just going to click agent forwarding and instead of specifying the exact key. So I'm going to click open and then I can log in with EC2 user by default. That's the default root user account and I'm into the server. So this is the web server. I directly access it over the internet. So if the keys get compromised at all, then anybody in the entire world will have access to this server directly for management reasons. And we, we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead now and close down this server or exit out of my terminal program. And what I want to do is I want to create a new server, a new instance. It's going to be my jump box. So it's going to be a Linux server, nothing fancy for this particular server. So you can pick whatever instance type you want. I'm just going to create one of them right now because that's all I need for this demonstration. I'm going to put it in the network I need to put it in, the VPC. I'm going to use my public subnet so that way there I can access this jump box over the internet. 
I'm gonna use my subnet settings for assigning IP addresses. I don't need any specific rules here in this case. I don't need to worry about uh, network interfaces right now or providing any user data for this example. I'm gonna go ahead and add storage now. I'm fine with the default storage requirements. I'm going to add a tag. This tag is just to name it right now. I'll add some more tags later, but we'll call it our jump box. I'm going to go ahead and click configure security groups now. And this is where we're going to need to create a new security group, a security group specifically for this jump box. So I'm going to call it our jump box security group. Description, allow SSH access. And you can see here SSH is already pre-populated, TCP, port 22 for administrative purposes. Now, the source address here, I would highly encourage you again to be as specific as possible. So figure out what the best range of addresses or the specific addresses that will be used to administer these, de these devices, or I should say connect to this jump box. Review and launch. Let's go ahead and launch our jump box. So now we need a key pair, a private public key pair. I would not use the same private public key pairs I am using on my web servers or any other servers. These should be key pairs specifically used for the jump box. So I am using demo key pair right now on my web servers, but I do have another key pair I already created a long time ago called jump box. So I'm going to use the jump box key pair that I created a while ago and the public key will now be stored on the jump box. And I have by clicking this checkbox, the jump box private key stored locally on my device right now. So I'll click on launch instance and it's going to launch my jump box, but we're not done here. All right. I've just created the server. That's all I've done. I'm not finished yet. I now need to modify the security groups. And this is probably the most important part of this demonstration. It's modifying the security groups. So that way there, the web servers only allow SSH connectivity from the jump box. How do we do that? Well, let's go to our security groups again. And we'll see here that our Linux web server security group for the inbound rule says SSH 22 from everybody. Well, let's change the source. Let's edit this. So that way there it is the jump box security group that's going to be utilized. And the jump box security group is where right here. And it is SG70E, etc. So let's go ahead and click edit. We will remove this entry here, SG, and there it is, jump box. So we'll pick that one, we'll click save. So what this does now is it ensures that any SSH connections to the web servers can only be made if those connections are coming from any device in the jump box security group. So I don't need to know the jump box's IP address. I just need to make sure I populate it with the jump box security group. So any servers that are part of the jump box security group can use SSH to connect to the web servers. So we go back to our instances now. We'll grab our jump box DNS. And we're going to populate that into putty. We are going to now use what is known as agent forwarding for a very specific region reason. And that is if I put in the private key file here for authentication. So if I click browse and said, use the jump box key, the problem with this is that once I get into the jump box, I need to import the private key of the web servers into the jump box so that I can then SSH into the web servers. We don't want to do that. We do not want to store any keys on the jump box. So this demo key pair is what is needed to go from the jump box into the web servers. The jump box keys are what are needed to go from where I'm standing right now into the jump box. So this was the key I was using a while ago to go from where I'm standing now into the web servers, but we don't want to do that anymore. We want to go into the jump box first 
and then into the web servers. So why all this jumping around? Well, if we just go directly into the web servers, they are open to direct connectivity from the internet. But if we go to the jump box first, then they're only accessible from the jump box. So in order to simplify my life, again, I want to use pageant. So with putty, I use pageant. Maybe your terminal program will allow you just to embed the keys right into your terminal program. That's fine. But I'm just going to add my key here now, and I'm going to add also my jump box key pair. So I have my jump box key pair plus my demo key pair now. And I have to click allow agent forwarding. So now that all that is done, I can connect into my jump box. Let's try that again. We have to put in the right password or the right username, pardon me. SSH, auth, allow agent forwarding, yes. Log in, EC2-user. Right, so I'm in what? I am in the jump box. Now, all I have to do is type in SSH and get the DNS name of the server I want to connect to. So in this case, this Linux server is this one I want to connect to. I'm going to grab the DNS name, the host name. We're going to put it into our jump boxes window. And do you trust the key? I trust the key. Yes. I am now connected to the web server. So this adds a layer of defense. So if for some reason the jump box key gets compromised, are my web servers compromised? The answer to that is no, because none of the keys are stored on the jump box. If we store the private keys on the jump box, then yes, we would have our private keys compromised if the jump box was compromised. But we're not storing the keys on the jump box. We are using agent forwarding to go from here into the jump box into the web server for administration. So when using your Bastion host, a couple of things to keep in mind. You're going to have to modify your security groups to make sure that your web server security group is accepting those inbound SSH connections from the jump box. And then you want to make sure you're using agent forwarding for your private key. So that way there you don't have to embed any private keys in the jump box.